Okay, one of the reasons I hate and love this game is for the just how often I suddenly realize the solution to something, like as soon as I close the flipping game. Oh, wait, never mind. I didn't realize the solution to this at all. <laughs> eh. Damn it. I really like the pause scream on this game. It's so good. It's like you've been staring at the puzzle for a long time and you just want to close your eyes and you still see the puzzle in front of you. <sighs> well, what am I miscalculating, friends? That sure is a thing I can do. Oh. 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 Darn it. Wait, hold on. I can still do this, right? There we go. I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it! It totally does take me over to the roof of this house. That is awesome! Now I can solve this puzzle. see from here. I was hoping that this house would give me the right vantage point. How do I get inside that house? Who knows? Hmm. That's curious. I can see it from over here. I almost can. <laughs> Come on. Well... Anyway... I hope I don't have to come back there, because I kind of just want to leave right now. What do you think is faster? Going all the way back and taking the boat, or remembering how to solve these puzzles again? Oops, that is not what I wanted to do. Uh, what happens if I'm standing on this when it folds up? Oh, it just kind of retracts me back in.
Yeah, that was faster than going around and taking the boat. I assume that some of these light up pieces of this. Yeah. That's frustrating, I didn't get that other shadow. Alright, so how many lasers do I have up there? Five. And I think there's there's six, too, coming in from the behind there. Yep. Hmm. I just need one more laser. And all the boxes will be open. Oh, there's a laser in town? No way. I've always wanted to come back to the town. I know what these stars mean now. And the purple ones don't make any sense, because there's three of them. What? What? Are you serious right now? Well, these ones at least I can do. Or this one. Oh, you know what? I'll bet the colors are all mixed up. You see the tint to the window here? Son of a gun. I bet you, I bet you I don't have to solve this one to solve that one, because I know color theory. So the purple ones are going to end up looking black with yellow, I think. Maybe? Fudge it. I'm too lazy to work through my color theory. Or am I? See, I'm, I'm like issuing myself a challenge here. I gotta do it. I, I just gotta do it. Okay. So. Through a yellow filter, what colors can I see? I can only see the primary colors of light. Um, red and green. Now, um, red and green. There's red and green bouncing off of this. That's going to look yellow. Or, well, actually, it's going to look white, because it's going to look the same as all of these. Um, blue is one of the primary colors that doesn't fit, so uh, it's going to look black. So these two are black. All of these are white, black, black. Uh, red is going to look red. This is red and blue, so this is going to look red. So all of these are red, black, and white. All right. Um, assuming my memory is any sort of reasonable, the only real colors I need to split, so these are all red, red, black, white. Colors of the same color can coexist next to each other, so I need to draw a line between these two black ones somehow. I need to draw a line between these two and these two. I can probably put that over this way then, like um, this. Right? Am I wrong, or am I a genius? I'm uh, not actually a genius, because now I can't find any way to solve the rest of this. Because I only get to make one cut here, and it won't let me do that. These two are different colors, so let's just put those two together. These two are different colors, so let's put those two together. Let's revise this a little bit. All three of these groups are different colors. Right? Um, yes. God, this is taxing my memory. Um, then I can put these two together, these three together rather. Oh, check that out. I solved it without solving this. You may all bow down to me now. Um, I still don't... What's the visual cue that I'm supposed to use for this guy? Oh. There it is.
Wait, hold on, that makes no sense. Maybe it's like this. That makes more sense. Do do do. Nice. You know, I don't have to turn on the town laser if I can figure out what's up with this desert laser. But actually, that's honestly less likely than me figuring out the de the town laser, because I followed that desert laser all the way to its end, and I have no idea still what to do with it. Hold on. What? What's this? What's... are you fudging kidding me right now? And watch, I still won't be able to stick my head in the beam. Oh, that is sick. Oh, I totally picked the right direction too. Wait, was that seven lasers? There are more lasers. Okay. Actually, I kind of already knew that from a conversation with a friend. He kept vaguely hinting that my laser count was wrong. So there's definitely a laser in town, right? We saw one at the top of that building, but I guess, uh, I guess we can come back to it now, honestly. Because, um... Well... The mountain should be unlocked, right? The box on the top of the mountain? So let's see what happens. Oh, incidentally, this thing about the columnar basalt, and me saying, like, this has got to be an extremely geologically improbable rock formation. Um. So there's actually a rock formation like this in Wyoming. A columnar basalt isolated from any um, higher masses of rock. Like, um, we were talking about, or I was talking to myself at my computer about how these are formed by lava flows that cool rapidly. Um, there's one in Wyoming called Devil's Tower not the same one I mentioned last time, which was Devil's Postpile. I don't know why these all have to do with the devil. There's one in England called, like, Giant's Steps or something nonsensey like that. Um, we just open the box. Darn straight. Oh, wait, what? Oh, there's more to be done. Okay. So, like I was saying, there's one in Wyoming that's just basically a giant mountain of columnar basalt. Um, with no land masses around it. There's, uh, actually, there's, like, no definite theory on why it is the way it is. Um, one of the theories is that it started as on level ground, and then all the earth o around it got eroded away. So, I suppose that's a, a possible way for this to have formed. And another possible theory was actually one of the things that I mentioned in that video where I brought this up, um, that a whole bunch of lava just got spurted up into the ground, and or spurted up out of the ground, um, and cool. Where is the solution to this? I don't see any curved edges. I was really hoping that that would open this box. I don't see anywhere to park my cursor at the end. Where am I supposed to park my cursor? That's perplexing. Oh, hey. Up there, 
You go around every hour and a half, time after time after time. You wake up usually in the mornings, and just the way that the track of your orbits go, you wake up over the Mideast, over North Africa. As you eat breakfast, you look out the window as you're Sounds going like past, talking and there's the Mediterranean, the astronauts on and the Greece, ISS or something. and Rome, and North Africa, and the Sinai, totally the is. whole area. And you realize that in one glance, that what you're seeing is what was the whole history of a man for years, the cradle of civilization. And you go around down across North Africa and out over the Indian Ocean and look up at that great subcontinent of India pointed down toward you as you go past it. And Ceylon off to the side, Burma, Southeast Asia, out over the Philippines and up across that monstrous Pacific Ocean, vast body of water. You've never realized how big that is before. Oh, it only appears when I'm And you finally done. come up across the coast of California and look for those friendly things. Los Angeles and Phoenix and on across El Paso. And there's Houston. There's home. And you look and sure enough, there's the Astrodome. And you identify with that, you know? It's an attachment. And down across New Orleans and then looking down to the south Wait, and there's work. the whole peninsula of Florida. It's two black dots. Right. And all the hundreds of hours you spent flying there. There's across there. that route down in the atmosphere. There's one there. There's all one that there. is friendly again. And you go out across the Atlantic Ocean and back across Africa. And you do it again and again and again. And that identity that you identify with Houston and then you identify with Los Angeles and Phoenix and New Orleans and everything. And the next thing you recognize in yourself is you're identifying with North oh, Africa. Oh, because uh, black. You look identity. forward to that. You anticipate it. And there it is. That whole process begins to shift of what it is you identify with. When you go around it in an hour and a half, you begin to recognize that your identity is with that whole thing. And that makes a change. You look down there and you can't imagine how many borders and boundaries you crossed again and again and again. And you don't even see them. At that wake up scene, the Mid East, you know there are hundreds of people killing each other over some imaginary line that you can't see. From where you see it, the thing is a whole. And it's so beautiful. And you wish you could take one from each side in hand and say, look at it from this perspective. Look at that. What's in it? And so a little later on, your friend, again those same neighbors, another astronaut, the person next to you goes out to the moon. And now he looks back and sees the Earth not as something big where he can see the beautiful details, but he sees the Earth as a small thing out there. And now that contrast between that bright blue and white Christmas tree ornament and that black sky, that infinite universe really comes through. The size of it, the significance of it, it becomes both things. Oh, come on. It becomes so small and so fragile and such a precious little spot in that universe that you can block it out with your thumb. And you realize that on that small spot, that little blue and white thing is everything that means anything to you. All of history and music and poetry and art and war and death and birth and love, tears, joy, games, that? all of Pretty it sure that, is right? on that little spot out there <laughs> that you can cover with your thumb. And you realize that Wait, that what? perspective, that you've changed. That there's something new there. That oh, relationship is no longer what it was. Son of a gun. Okay. And then you look back on the time when it. you were outside on that EVA and those few moments that you had the time because the camera malfunctioned, that you had the time to think about what was happening. <laughs> and you recall staring out there at the spectacle that went before your eyes. Huh? Because now you're no longer yeah, inside uh, something with a window looking out at a picture. But now you're out there. And what you've got around your head is a goldfish bowl. And there are no limits here. There are no frames. There are no boundaries. You're really out there. 
over it, floating, going 25,000 miles per hour, ripping through space, a vacuum, and there's not a sound. There's a silence, the depth of which you've never experienced before. Got past. And that silence contrasts so markedly with the scenery and the speed with which you know you're going. That contrast, the mix of those two things, really comes through. And you think about what you're experiencing and why. Do you deserve this? This fantastic experience? Have you earned this in some way? Are you separated out to be touched by God to have some special experience here that other men cannot have? You know the answer to that is no. There's nothing that you've done that deserves that, that earned that. It's not a special thing for you. You know very well at that moment, and it comes through to you so Let's powerfully try this other one. that you're the sensing element for man. You look down and see the surface of that globe that you've lived on all this time, and you know all those people down there. They are like you. They are you. And somehow you represent them when you are up there. A sensing element, that point out on the end, and that's a humbling feeling. It's a feeling that says you have a responsibility. It's not for yourself. The <sighs> eye that doesn't see after this too, aren't does there? not is do justice mirror? to the body. Totally is That's mirror. why it's there. That's why you're out there. And somehow you recognize that you're a piece of this total life. You're out on that forefront and you have to bring that back somehow. That was a and that becomes drop. a rather special responsibility. It tells you something about your relationship with this thing we call life. And when you come back, there's a difference in that world now. There's a difference in that relationship between you and that planet, and you and all those other forms of life on that planet, because you've had that kind of experience. It's a difference, and it's so precious. And all through this, I've used the word you because it's not me. It's not Dave Scott. It's not Dick Gordon, Pete Conrad, John Glenn. It's you. It's us. It's we. It's life. It's had that experience. And it's not just my problem to integrate. It's not my challenge to integrate, my joy to integrate. It's yours. It's everybody's. Russell Schweikart, 1975. That was a pretty nice reading. I can't figure out where to get that thing from. Also, this puzzle, someone in the comments has assured me is possible to get that purple thing on the bottom. So I'm gonna go back and do that at some point, because ostensibly I haven't just ruined the whole thing. There's the one dark cloud. I forgot to keep track of that one moving cloud. Don't know where it went. That's not it. I get distracted easily, don't I? Oh, son of a gun! What? How am I supposed to solve this at all? I forgot that wire would impede my progress. The heck?
There's two I haven't walled off. That, that one and that one. I may have found a way to this one though. any complete paths from this angle. Get from here to there, all of my paths are blocked off except he through here. Alright, well, let's see what I can work with. This is super complicated for me. I cannot manipulate objects this strange in my head. Oh, that's not a mirror, it's a camera. Whoa. here. I can't. Ugh. do this, can I? I really don't get that one. Let's 
beautiful island though. I wonder if there is any of those shadow puzzles that you have to complete with your own shadow. That would be the coolest thing ever. I don't think my shadow is the right shape though. Puzzling. <laughs> hon, 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 hon. I really don't want to give up now, but I'm pretty sure I've already exhausted my allotted time. What you looking at? These statues are so weird. Oh, you know, I didn't notice earlier that these are have some of the same symbols. It's got the hexagon, it's got the little windmilly things. I presume those are supposed to be tetrominoes. Oh yeah, there's, there's a tetromino. I don't know what that is. Oh, it's a tree. It's the tree! I don't recognize... I don't recognize that or this. Those are the sun puzzles in the desert. Huh. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I think it's time to call it. Um, I found that if I want to be efficient with my time in this game, it's, it's best to take breaks. Because then you're, you, you like think about it and you realize things when you're not actually playing the game. So if, since an unstated goal of mine is to finish the witness as quickly as possible, I'm actually just trying to beat my friends and maybe try to finish under 20 hours, I don't know. Now's probably a good time to call it quits. So, beautiful uh, seven laser victory over here. Uh, take a screenshot of that for the old uh, thumbnail. And I'll catch you later, you lovable nerds. <laughs>